Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I turn these pine cookies into serving trays with black resin. So to start out here, I'm getting out my router sled. I'm doing this because the cookies were cut by chainsaw, so they're not really flat at all. So this is gonna give me a flat surface to work with. As you can see here, I'm using a one inch router bit for flattening. Now I'm laying these all out and I'm trying to figure out a way I can fit all six of them on my router sled to try to do them all at once to save some time and try to get them all to the exact same thickness. I got them all laid out and I ended up having to put two by fours under them as you can see there because um, my router sled's a little too high for them. They're only about an inch and a half thick maybe at the thickest parts. Now this is a tedious process, but it definitely has to be done. And as you can see, it makes a lot of sawdust and a really big mess to clean up. And there's really no way to try to contain it. It's just, you kind of have to let it go, clean it up later with a shop vac. So basically this is kind of just the rinse and repeat. I'll end up flipping them over and doing both sides until I get a flat surface on each side. Here you can see the aftermath, kind of the sawdust that I have everywhere. So I'm going to be working on cleaning that up with the shop vac, trying to sweep it all together to save me some time. Next, I'm breaking out the chisels to um, remove the bark here as much as I can at least. Um, the reason you want to do this is because over time it will definitely fall off and it stinks it kind of is like that because it really adds character, I think, but it is definitely safe to remove it. I'm also doing this now so I can tape up the pieces for resin and hopefully get a better bond to the side. So the tape that I'm using here is just red tuck tape and little did I know at this moment that one piece is definitely not enough. So I will be going back in the future adding some more because I did end up springing a leak. So I'm just using a tabletop epoxy here. Um, the cracks aren't too big, so I shouldn't have a problem doing this just all in one pour. Um, it's very important that you get an even mixture because many times I've had issues where I haven't had an even pour and the epoxy would not harden on me, which is super annoying. It's also important that you try to get at least every last drop that you can in here between the resin and the hardener. I'm just using a black epoxy dye here, nothing really too special. What I do to mix it in is just get a clean piece of scrap and dab a little bit on there before I start mixing. After mixing thoroughly for about three to five minutes, I have a little syringe here I take to fill all the cracks with making minimal mess.
So here's where the mess starts. As you can see, the middle one starts to leak there. And I basically go around and reinforce every single one of them with tape again to try to prevent that. The nice thing about tabletop epoxy is it really only takes like 16 to 24 hours to completely harden. So as you can see here, the next day I'm back trying to peel all this tape off. And I don't get all of it completely off, but that will come off with the sander. Time to get the belt sander out. You can see the bottom piece there, the bottom piece of sandpaper I've used for resin in the past, and you can see how it kind of ruins it compared to the other one that was just used for wood. So I'm using that one there to try to save the other one. After sanding for about five minutes, it doesn't take long for me to realize that this is going to take forever. So eventually I switch back over to my router sled and end up shaving just a little bit off of each side again. I wanna to try to keep these as thick as I possibly can because over time, the thinner they are, the more chances that they will warp. Also, instead of doing them all six at once, I decide to just do one at a time. I feel like this way I can kind of customize them each more and take more or less off of each one depending on what it needs. Now a large drum sander would have came super in handy right here, but sadly enough, I cannot afford one of those. So hopefully sometime in the future, I will have that luxury. Back to the belt sander again, I ended up putting on that nice piece of 50 grit sandpaper on the belt sander. And I'm just trying to take off the rough router marks that I left here. Also, I'm going around and getting all the leftover bark that I didn't get with the chisel to give it a smooth and uniform edge here. Once I have the edges sanded to my liking, I'm slapping on a fresh piece of 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital palm sander. Um, I end up working my way up through the grits from 80 to 220 here, and I hit the edges with a small round over with the sander. Now pine is a very soft wood to work with, so you can kind of see from this angle here that there are definitely some tear out marks from the router that I can't sand out. They're a good eighth to quarter inch deep and I wish I could fix it, but that's one thing that I can't really change in this project. Once I have each one sanded to 220, I bring out a towel and some finishing blocks here. For the finish, I'm applying just a regular old um, mineral oil. Um, there'll be food on these, so I want a food safe finish. And this pine end grain really sucks up the oil, so I need a lot more than what I was thinking to begin with. The oil really makes that end grain pop there and it puts a nice sheen to the resin. It also didn't take long for me to realize that just rubbing it in with the glove was the way to go. I set the card scraper to the side and just liberally poured on a lot of oil there and rubbed it in with the glove and I made sure to get all the sides and edges as well. Now, after I put all the oil on them, I let them sit for about two hours. It really doesn't take long for them to dry. And I use this um, wood butter by The Bearded Chef. Um, this really just helps to put a protective layer on it because the oil does not do a good job with that. 
Now for the final reveal. In the end, I was pretty happy with how they turned out. There's definitely some things I would have done differently, like been more careful with the router on the sled and tried to limit the epoxy spread on the top. Thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. Um, I'm a brand new channel, so any support helps a lot. There will definitely be more content in the future.